What's up everybody, it's Gun Turbo here. This is Skyrim Special Edition, exclusively on Xbox One. In this video I'd like to share with you my September 2018 load order for Xbox One. For those of you new to my channel and my videos, thanks for tuning in. I've always aimed to create the best looking modded Skyrim as possible, focusing on better quality, weather, lighting, texture, and meshes. This load order has been built from over a year and a half of time and testing. At this point, as new mods come out, and I check regularly if not daily, I test certain mods and see if, in my opinion, it's high quality enough for an improvement, but also still lore friendly. I also look for consistency in blending and coloring. Now I understand that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but this load order is simply what I believe looks as best that Skyrim can. And this load order covers most textures in the game. Now, I tend to perseverate over the best weather and lighting and display settings to choose. My favorite lighting mods are Divine Atmospheres, Obsidian Weathers, and Mythical Ages with True Storms patches. I've taken a break from playing with Vivid Weathers and I've really liked what these other weather mods have to offer. You'll see in this video what I recommend as the best weather and lighting mod, but feel free to try any of these others because they all look great. What I want to do in this video is to go through my load order and talk briefly about each mod. And there's also a list in the description of this video. So first we're going to start at the top of the load order with the unofficial Skyrim patch. This obviously helps fix a lot of the bugs in the game. Under that, I have Campfire. This mod is used in conjunction with Frostfall, and uh, it allows your character to camp, to create certain items with different resources in Skyrim. Uh, you can build fires, you can craft things, you can uh, uh, create uh, tents and shelter, and uh, be able to sleep outdoors, and uh, cook food, and keep your player warm, if in fact you do use Frostfall as well. For texture overhaul mods, I use the graphics pack, and you'll see in this load order I have the graphics pack, followed by assets 1 and 2, and then graphics pack static mesh performance. And I highly recommend uh, the graphics pack mods. They do cover a tremendous amount of, of objects in the game, not just clutter, but things like uh, uh, texture overhauls to many of the towns and cities in Skyrim. Further on down the load order, under graphics pack, I do use the Divine Texture Pack Furniture and Rugs. This mod increases the look of, of furniture. I think it looks fantastic and I just really like the look of it, uh, but also the rugs in the game. I found that uh, graphics pack didn't quite have a good strong rug retexture. And I really like the look of, of the uh, the rugs that this mod has to provide. Under that we have white run stone walls. Um, the one thing that the graphics pack does to white run stone walls is is use the Osmodius um, uh, textures. And I just prefer the white run stone walls texture than the Osmodius um, white run uh, stones. So that's why I have that in my load order. For landscape overhauls, you know, Skyland is popular, uh, Rustic Lands is also popular. And this is the Rustic Lands blended version. I just really like the look of Rustic Lands. Now this mod here, the blended version, uh, does a nice job of blending textures, but also um, incorporates a mountain or rock uh, mod as well. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the North Fires Photo Real Mountains that uh, this mod incorporates, which I was using before. It looks really great. The mod, the, the another mod that this that this recommends using is Nordic Snow, which I've always had in my load order. It's a little bit further on down. But I really like the look of Rustic Lands. They're high quality. Um, the colors look great. It's not too oversaturated. Uh, they look very natural, but a really nice variety. Under that I have Skyland Towns and Villages. Now this mod increases the look of, of the, the 
uh, villages and towns, the wood, the thatching of the roof, um, but also interiors. A lot of the uh, inns will have a much better, higher quality texture to the floor, to the fire pits, um, to the to the wood textures inside inns as well. So I really, really like the look. I've tested all of the farm and uh, village mods that exist and the the Skyland one, this one here, Skyland Towns and Villages, I think looks the best, uh, is the most natural, um, and blends well with everything else that I have in this load order. Now underneath that, I also have a number of other texture overhauls that cover uh, some specific things. So you're first going to see Skyland Imperial Forts and Dungeons. This overhauls, obviously, textures in forts and dungeons. Um, under that, you're going to see a series of mods here that are these dungeon mods. So there's dungeons, Nordic tombs and ruins, um, caves, and also mines. Now, these mods are by T4GTR34UM3R is the mod author. And uh, this series of dungeon mods, I think, are absolutely superior to any other interior mod that covers these specific things. Mines, caves, dungeons, tombs, and ruins. Um, however, I feel that the Skyland Imperial Forts and Dungeons... Uh, is better than the the dungeons, <laughs> uh, imperial forts and dungeons. I just think it looks better and and just just blends better. Under that, I have a series of three mods that are just simply titled White Run, Dawnstar, and Markarth, and these just add some additional objects and cluttery kinds of things to these three towns. Um, White Run, for example, you'll get like a little some archways, some some banners in the market. Uh, there's some different placements of, of, I think, torches and trees and clutter and just kind of things like that. In Dawnstar, I think there's like an extra ship or a dock, just stuff like that. Just adds a little bit more to these, these three, the, the, these three cities here. Some people ask me, where do I find this white run mod? It's not anywhere. It's, it's not easily found. The best thing that I can say is that go to the Bethesda website under Skyrim Mods, and I think the only place that it exists is under Work in Progress. It just seems to be kind of stuck there. Um, find it if you favorite it or add it to your library. Then you can go back in through your Xbox and uh, uh, find the um, find it there under your favorites or, or library. There's also an... I believe it's an NS version, which is uh, takes away the the fencing in um, that that this mod here adds. So that's the best I can explain to where to find those those mods. Underneath that, I have Frostfall, which again is definitely kind of this pairing with Campfire. Um, works great, and what it does is Frostfall. Uh, creates the climate to be more realistic so your character will become cold if it gets cold if you're more north if you're you know outside at nighttime if you don't have the proper clothing your character will begin to get cold and it will affect some of your abilities and and attributes so um you know if you if you go into the water in more northern areas you are going to really freeze quite quickly um, in the southern areas, not as much. You can get wet, and everything just just affects your your character, unless you go either into a shelter or an enclosed area, or build a campfire and tent through campfire and uh, warm your character up that way. So it's a bit of a survival um, kind of micromanaging kind of kind of uh, mod that uh, that you can use, and I do like to use those because you know my character. I like to try a little bit more of a survival feel to to it. Underneath that, speaking of more survival kinds of uh, uh, mods, I, I, I use I Need. This is a food, water, and and sleep mod. And what this does is it, it, it forces your character to have to eat food, drink water, and, uh, and rest. Um, there's a lot of options within this mod to adjust different rates and, you know, what can happen to your character. 
Um, I pretty much keep everything on the kind of the default settings. And uh, basically, you know, you have to eat a couple times a day and drink water um, and and rest. But what it does, it, it, it just brings a little bit more, in my opinion, realism to surviving in, in Skyrim. Um, I try to go for not a full survival, you know, extreme kind of kind of gameplay, but but just enough to keep me keep me monitoring and uh, uh, maintaining my character a little bit. So campfire, frostfall, you know, food, water, and and sleep are basically the mods that I uh, I kind of try to keep um, in my load order to to uh, experience a little bit more realism. A couple of sound mods I have here: immersive sounds, compendium, reverb, and ambience overhaul. Uh, I've always used these in my load order, and uh, just the the difference that these two mods make to the sound in your game um, are really, really incredible. Underneath that, we have Enhanced Lights and Effects. This is an exterior mod. This isn't the interior mod. This isn't weather. This is the exterior version. And what this what this is supposed to do is just add some 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 light sources to your game. Like, one big thing that I really like about this mod is that um, from a distance, if you are approaching, let's say, a town or a village during the nighttime, um, windows will be lit from a distance. Or even as you get it closer, uh, windows will be illuminated from you know what looks like the inside. Uh, there's other kinds of shadow effects that can happen with with this mod. Um, I've I've read different things of where to put this mod, and a lot of people have asked how does this mod affect weathers and lighting. Um, more recently, I've read a few things that suggest that this go up, up a little bit higher in the load order above weather mods. So I've been trying it above uh, some, well, I've been trying it pretty high in the load order just to see if there's any difference. And honestly, I'm really not seeing a difference whether it's up high or, or further on down. Underneath that, that mod, I, you'll, you'll see two weather mods that uh, uh, are not active. So here is where I would typically put my weather and lighting mods based on the Dropbox load order document. And here I have Obsidian Weathers and Seasons. Uh, I've recently been kind of showcasing this and have, have had a lot of great things to say about it. It's here in my load order, not active, but I just wanted to show you that this is where I would typically put some of my weather and lighting mods, either here or down towards the bottom based on mod author recommendations. So here I have Obsidian Weathers and Seasons. I would highly recommend uh, this weather mod as one to choose if you're looking for a an increase to the look of your game in a in a good way um, compared to vanilla you'll see that I have a patch under that it's a true storms patch there's two versions of this obsidian weathers patch and I believe this one uh, here is the one that adds a little bit more of a true storms look to to the game. Makes everything a little bit more dark and and uh, ominous. Um, I don't remember the name of this one. I think it's spectral. So Obsidian Weathers and, and, and Season is one weather and lighting mod that I that I highly recommend. Uh, underneath Obsidian Weathers and Seasons, I would put true storms in between those two there but in this load order I have another one to share with you that's further on down in the load order underneath that we have some player home and building mods Lord of the Rings locations which I want to do a uh, a um, video on sometime soon um, it adds a door in the ooh, the western part of Skyrim where when you enter it can take you to, I think, four Lord of the Rings locations that are meant to kind of, you know, uh, uh, reenact or, you know, be similar to the, the movies. Underneath that, we have Watchtowers of Skyrim. This adds a few, I think, four or five watchtowers in in uh, Skyrim throughout the land. They do show up on your map when you um, activate this mod, but yet I've yet to visit any watchtowers. I just... Um, Something I plan to do at some point. Under underneath that, I have Breeze Home, TNF Hearthfire. This is a wonderful Breeze Home mod. If your character or if you you know have occupied Breeze Home in White Run after becoming Jarl, um, or not not Jarl, Thane, I should say, uh, Lydia will hang out with you in Breeze Home. But this mod adds a top floor, a basement, 
and can outfit you with pretty much everything you need to uh, um, uh, sleep, some armor, um, uh, mannequins, um, uh, stations, alchemy, uh, a forge in the basement, um, just pretty much everything that you need. It's a really cool mod. Under that, we start getting into some foliage mods. So here I have Trees in Cities. This is a very light tree mod that will splatter trees in different cities. If you like Project Hippie, which I do, um, yet that conflicts with some other mods that I have, uh, this mod just adds a nice splattering of trees in, in, in towns and cities uh, to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, it doesn't conflict too much with, with some other mods that I have in my load order. I use Divine Forests. This adds trees throughout throughout Skyrim and uh, in, in certain places. And in my opinion, um, it's performance friendly enough to, to work well. Uh, adds flowers, adds some, some, some butterflies and insects and things like that. And uh, even in some towns and cities it will add um, some other additional trees as well. Underneath that, I have GT's Gardens of Whiterun. This uh, is a mod that adds a tremendous amount of flowers and gardeny kinds of things to Whiterun. I just think it looks really, really beautiful. And then we get into my favorite grass mod, Vados Broom. This uh, is a mod that that adds grasses and ground cover to the entire world. And uh, of all the grass mods out there, I think this one looks looks fantastic. Looks natural. The textures look great. A nice splattering of, of color and, and variety um, and pretty performance friendly. This version that I use is the normal version. Underneath that, HD Photorealistic Ivy. You'll see that I have underneath that the Autumn of Whiterun. This is inactive. As uh, autumn approaches us here in the Northern Hemisphere, I plan to um, plug this back into my load order um, just to maybe showcase this again. Uh, this year, just kind of getting back into that that fall feeling, but right now I'm currently inactive in my load order. Lush Overhaul is a mod that I really really enjoy. It just beefs up and and uh, increases the amount of uh, textures to um, trees and plants throughout the world. Landscape fixes for grass mods. This reduces grass growing where it really technically shouldn't. So if you have a walkway, sometimes grass will conflict in certain areas with like a walkway or um, uh, a stony area and grass is like popping up through the stones, unnatural looking, and this just takes that out in most areas in Skyrim. Detailed terrain and tree LOD, level of detail. So the far background of Skyrim, the mountains, uh, if, if you notice, and, and trees as well, if you notice they're kind of blurred out, they're definitely not that highly detailed, and that's just for, you know, performance and graphic rendering reasons, and this just adds a little bit of detail to that, uh, that level of detail that's in the, in the far background. Underneath that we have Skyrim is Windy. This allows trees and, and plants to just blow in the breeze, or look like they're blowing in the breeze. This adds a little bit more realism to the game. We then get into some gameplay mods here. I have uh, better combat AI, athletic combat, and those two mods uh, just make combat a little bit more engaging and a little bit more controller friendly. Visible favorite gear I really like, so if you have a active or f actually a, f a favorited weapon, then that object or weapon will show up on your character um, with some with some limitations. You know, you can't have three or four bows favorited and that they'll all show up. You kind of have to, you know, be a little careful with what you actually have. So, you know, a bow on the back with arrows, um, a a sword on your left hip, a mace on your right hip, um, let's see, a shield in your arm, all of these things will show up on your character if they are if they are favorited. Underneath that we have immersive citizens and underneath that one mod that I talked about in a in another video 
Pecker's Random NPC. This mod adds random NPCs throughout the world, mainly bandits, witches, and just random travelers. And I like this mod because it gives me a chance to to just battle the baddies every once in a while. And they always seem to come in threes. So you'll have like three bandits that will show up or that will... It's kind of neat. We'll actually like... Uh, come to a, uh, a town or a village and then the guards get involved and you can have a nice skirmish happening. Um, the bandits can be pretty tough. Uh, witches will show up just kind of randomly as well. They are definitely not as tough as the bandits, but it's nice to just, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're looking for a fight more regularly than, than not, then this is a good mod to have. Um, and then just kind of random travelers that populate, populate the, the roads and, and, um, uh, uh, woods and, and, and fields of the game. The weird thing about this mod is that every once in a while, the characters will, um, they will generate by falling from the sky. You'll be walking along and all of a sudden you'll see two NPCs just fall and, and die, uh, close by you, um, as they are spawning, um, it's just kind of a weird thing, but I don't know. It's just uh, nothing that breaks it for me, but it's a really neat, really neat mod to have. Underneath that, we have Splendor Dragon Variants. This changes kind of randomly the, the color and I think textures of, of dragons, so you can get a whole bunch of variety of dragons just by the randomness that, that this mod does. It doesn't seem to change many of the dragon uh, meshes or the way they look um, you know some other mods will do that but they are very high in file size so I just like this one underneath that rich merchants of Skyrim and expensive Skyrim these are just two mods that for me um, I like to have the ability to sell things to merchants and if I'm buying something that I you know really need to make sure that uh it's uh when they're exp when 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 items are expensive, it gives me a little more incentive to to build the gold to try to you know buy those items. So, in my opinion, just adds a little bit more challenge with with the uh, economy of Skyrim. Realistic conversations, amazing follower tweaks, prismatic insects of Skyrim. Three more mods that I enjoy using. Underneath that we have Nordic Snow, and again, Rustic Lands Blended says you need Nordic Snow. Uh, one of the things with the more recent updates to Rustic Lands Blended is that the the roads in the snowy areas are covered with snow. And uh, I really think that's cool. It always, you know, kind of made me wonder why, like, the snowy areas of Skyrim always had nicely cleared off, off roads and the rocks were always nicely cleared off. So this uh, kind of covers the rocks, not completely. You can see them a little bit. Um, to me, it's a little more immersive because it's you're trying to find your way through some of the northern areas where there's snow, and with with them covered with a light dusting of snow, gives you a little bit more of a of a realistic challenge to try to navigate. But the texture of Nordic snow, I think, is one of the more superior snow overhaul mods that uh, is available for for Skyrim. Underneath that, lockpicking interface redone. This is just a mod that highly details a uh, a, a, a chest looking um, lock system. So when you go to pick a lock, and the you know the the graphic pops up. Um, this is a really nicely done uh, interface for that. Underneath that, I have my favorite clothing retexture mod, and that is. Changes NPC clothes, also called elaborate textiles. This changes clothes to give them a uh, a more elaborate look that incorporates a lot of detail to the clothing. So uh, paisley kinds of looks to clothing, to robes. Um, you know, I've used the word makes them a little bit more rich looking, and I don't mean like like rich, like high class rich, but just the detail gives it a little bit more like you know, um, authentic, I guess is maybe the word that I'm, I'm looking for. I just think it looks really, really nice. I then get into some blood and gore mods, uh, which, you know, in the middle of combat, I like to, 
<laughs> make sure I know that the the uh, bad guys are having it when I'm uh, taking care of business. So I have more blood and gore, followed by enhanced blood textures, followed by better blood splatters, and then followed by enhanced blood textures darker. I've actually played around with the order of these mods, and if they're not in this order, you're going to get some funky things happening and some funky looks. Um, so I would recommend this order. More blood and gore, enhanced blood textures, better blood splatters, and enhanced blood textures darker. Underneath that, another texture improvement mod, Design of the Nords. This mod changes all of the banners in Skyrim to a higher quality texture, in my opinion. I think it looks better. Um, and it's lore friendly. There's different, there's different um, uh, uh, banner texture mods. They look great. They all look wonderful. Um, but I think this one just looks the most natural and, again, kind of lore friendly. Display enhancements. This is, as I've said before, the in my opinion, the, the most important mod that you can have even if you have no other mods in your load order and are just playing vanilla, um, this allows you to make changes to saturation, brightness, contrast, some high dynamic range effects like like bloom and eye adaptation, um, sun scale, s uh, a sky scale, things like that, and uh, red, green, and blue tint. Um, there's a number of, of presets that are in place and also allows you to actually zoom in and out of your of your screen, of your world. Uh, that's really kind of neat for taking screenshots. I have found that just about for any mod, just about <laughs> for any mod, to, and again, it all depends on your, your, your display that you're using, whether it's a TV or a monitor or a projector or whatever it might be, but a little increase in, in contrast, like at least one, maybe no more than two or three, you know, one or two, um, depending on the weather and lighting mod that you're using, uh, an increase or decrease in saturation, um, and then again, brightness, depending on, on your display. But, but contrast seems to be kind of the make or break with, with whatever mod that you're using, weather and lighting sense. Uh, I have found that I'm always increasing, no matter what, contrast by one. Um, and then kind of going from there. I'm also finding that for my personal taste, I'm increasing red tint at least one or two times. And that's just a personal preference. I find a lot of weather and lighting mods to to really be heavy on the blue tint side. And although blue is a little more natural for our world, uh, uh, a little bit of red tint um, kind of brings out the browns in, in the game and reduces some of the, the heavy blue tint that I find happens. So that's pretty much what I do for display enhancements these days. Dynamically disable eye adaptation and bloom. I disable bloom in this mod and I enable eye adaptation. And I have a couple of videos on on that and what what that really does more specifically. Under that, I have thundering shouts. Under that, quieter dungeons and caves. I really like quieter dungeons and caves. It removes the kind of the weird background noise that the game provides. Uh, I don't know, if you don't have this mod and you just listen without music, you'll hear just kind of some, some funny weird things. I mean, it's meant to be the ambiance of it, but uh, if you try the game without any of those effects, it adds a little bit more of a dynamic kind of uh, 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 foreboding feel to being inside a dungeon or a cave. Under that, we have Dragon Remains. When you kill a dragon... It doesn't disappear to bones. It still lies dead as a dragon. Under that, we have Font Overhaul. Under that, a couple of cheat mods. I have the Cheat Room and uh, Shield Gorath Cheat Menu. I only use those two mods for, for testing. So I will use Cheat Room to play around with weather um, to see how different things look. And you can also adjust time. I really am only using that mod to test weather and uh, 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 between different parts of the day. And Showgrass Cheat Menu, you can use that. One of the features is also weather, but uh, there's a toggle um, collision that you can use, which is kind of neat for taking screenshots because you can move your character anywhere in uh, in the game. 
under that Gregorian Skyrim calendar, this changes all of the Skyrim months to Earth months and also days. So instead of like, um, you know, last seed or uh, some of the different months in Tamriel, you will get Earth months. So January, February, March, April. Um, you'll also get days as well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, instead of the uh, Tamriel days and months. And that works well if you're using a season mod like Obsidian Weathers and Seasons, because you can tell what what month of the year that you're in. Underneath that, I have a pretty lightweight female body texture and replacer, RUNP texture and body replacer, also known as Maidens of Skyrim. That's the only one I have really for, for any body replacers. Uh, superior lore friendly hair, girly animation, Drugger horrific textures, which is just a, an increase in, in uh, Drugger textures and, and uh, looks really nice. Um, we get into the Old Kingdom mods. I highly recommend Old Kingdom mods. Definitely have to have them in your load order. So since I use Sleeving Skyrim, I have Sleeving Skyrim, Old Kingdom Armor Overhaul, and then the Old Kingdom Sleeving Skyrim patch to make those work together. Underneath that, I have a a black and gold elven armor uh, replacer, which which uh, converts the the gold elven armor to this this black and gold look. I just really like the look of that. Underneath that, I have chainmail hoods, which gives you a chance to have chainmail hoods in the game. AC Crusader Armor. I did a video on this mod. It looks really, really nice. I really like the look of the armor, and it's only 3 megabytes, so it's kind of a, a cool mod to have if you really like the look of it. Underneath that, Improved Close Face Helmets. This mod allows the you know helmets that might have a, a black uh, covering over the eyes to, to not exist. So if you have a a uh, let's see for an example a um, an ebony helmet if you have an ebony helmet you will see where the eyes are the eye slit is just a black a black uh, 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 texture and this removes that so you actually see the eyes and it looks just makes them look realistic getting to some of my favorite weapons mods additional lower weapons followed by heavy armor new weapons se Followed by Skyrim SE Expanded Skyrim Weapons and Asilmarils Lord of the Rings Weapons. Uh, these mods in this order will add a tremendous amount of weapons to your game. Um, almost 200 total. I counted up one time. There is some overlap of of uh, of weapons in you know the uh, the uh, the leveled lists, I guess. So, um, but this will offer or provide a tremendous amount of weapons to, to the game. We then have Old Kingdom Weapon Overhaul. This increases the look to weapons, just like Old Kingdom Armor Overhaul, and uh, will even change some of the look to some of the, the more popular weapons. It's just a fantastic mod that you must have in any load order. Alternate Start gives you a chance to skip all the main storyline to just jump into the game, um, giving you a chance to try, like, uh, different places to start. So you might want to start as a uh, uh, a soldier, or maybe you want to start just camping in the woods, or maybe you're starting as a patron at an inn. Um, a number of different ways to start the game. Wearable lanterns gives you a chance to craft and either carry in your hand or attach to your character a lantern to be able to see, so you don't have to find torches all the time. Uh, faster horses. I typically am always on horseback when I'm traveling, so I like a little bit of get up to my my horse. Uh, creatures and food realistic. The next series of mods are a little bit more um, uh, gameplay mods that I that I choose for my light survival gameplay that I like. So creatures and food realistic. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. We have creatures and food realistic and realistic wildlife behavior. I believe the creatures of food realistic um, makes your animals drop everything that they should. So, like pelts, um, you know, in some cases, you know, claws, the heart, the meat, the antlers, uh, whatever the case might be for every 
animal that you drop, um, which would be more realistic. If you are hunting and killing an animal, you could technically salvage everything, and that's what this mod helps do. And uh, I believe also can make changes to the effects of um, the food as well. Uh, realistic wildlife behavior just makes it so creatures react more realistically. So not everything in the world attacks you, but more, uh, you know, if you were to be in the wild in real life, most animals are going to run away from you instead of just attack you on the spot. Um, and this creates a little bit of a balance of they're not going to attack you. They might run away. They might attack you if you provoke them kind of thing. Under that, I like food. This is a mod that I use that uh, if I am hunting an animal, the the meat that I cook offers a lot of restore health benefits, and that will be more of what I use to replenish health in battle or, um, or even paired with I need, replenish my, my hunger or sate my appetite. All right, I have... And my favorite interior lighting mod is ELE Interior Lighting Overhaul. There's a whole bunch of interior lighting mods. I've done videos on them. Um, they are, they're all wonderful depending on what you want to get out of them. Uh, ELE Interior Lighting Overhaul to me is, is for the player that wants to have a, 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 the most realistic looking interior. Only light sources that are within will illuminate the area. And uh, it also is friendly with torches and lanterns so like me if you uh want to use a torch or a lantern more realistically then um this is the best one to have because it won't cause any flicker uh things won't you know lights light won't flicker um and uh it's just it's just the, the most realistic one in my opinion if you use another lighting interior lighting overhaul like ele or divine some of the divine uh, interior overhauls you're you're going to get some some flicker if you use a torch or a lantern and it has to do with the number of of light sources that the game can handle or it's designed to to be able to use underneath ele i just wanted to honorably mention this other lighting mod simply darker interiors if you don't like ele then simply darker interiors is something that's very similar uh, and I found to be just as performance friendly as ELE when it comes to using torches and lanterns. So give that one a try if you don't like ELE. I think ELE is just a little darker than Simply Darker Interiors. I think Simply Darker Interiors is a little bit lighter overall. The ambience is a little bit lighter. But I just wanted to mention that other one as well if you're looking for something that is not as intensely realistic as ELE. But also not as intensely different than uh, than ELFX or Divine Interiors. Lanterns and Candles, Special Edition. I did a whole video on this where you can craft candles and place them throughout the world. A lot of fun. Underneath that I have Candlelight, ESP. Now, it seems to have been taken down. That's why it's kind of blacked out here or grayed out here. Uh, sometimes their mods are taken down and then put back up, but this allows or creates a kind of a shine, a shimmer to candle light that um, happens with candles. Underneath that I have venison. This is a, just a simple mod that, that reverts venison back to the vanilla look. One thing that, that uh, uh, the graphics pack does is changes the look of venison to a more gray skin. And um, I just don't like the look of it. I just think it looks quite artificial. I like the look of the vanilla venison, so I have this in my load order. Obviously, somebody else did as well to be able to create this mod. <laughs> I, underneath that, have dead NPC cleaner. This allows you to re remove a dead animal or person or even dragon by or if and when you catch them on fire. So a torch... A uh, you know fire breath, um, uh, a a flame or fireball uh, spell will um, burst them into flame and then they'll disappear. <laughs> Underneath that dynamic dungeon loot. So at the end of your dungeon crawl, when you come across the treasure, you will find a little bit more or different things in treasures. 
Ring of Power is a mod that is supposed to be a little bit more like uh, Lord of the Rings quest based. I have not yet tried that out yet. Underneath that, Soldier On, no more lazy Yarl. This makes your Yarls not look in that lazy pose, but actually kind of sit up. Underneath that, XP 3-2, Maximum Skeleton and Realistic uh, Ragdoll. Um, a lot of body mods require this mod. Uh, I have this in my loader because you're able to use it, and it has that ragdoll effect, which, which I like. Bounty Perks. This is a cool little mod. If you go to a... A town um, and go on one of those bandit quests you know like you'll you go to the innkeeper and say do you, know, do you have any work any rumors they'll say oh one of the Arl's men dropped this off you go and kill a bandit you go and kill the uh, the bandit chief you go back collect your reward at the usually the Jarl uh, and you'll get a perk point so you can go into your your uh, your skills menu and you cash that in for a perk I just think it's kind of a neat additional bonus Underneath that, I have Golden Egg Treasure Hunt. <laughs> I think around Easter time, I always said, hey, I wonder if there's a there's a treasure, in, uh, an Easter egg mod to be able to find Easter eggs. And sure enough, there is. Uh, this puts like, I don't know, hundreds of eggs around Skyrim. And you can just collect them. And they're actually kind of neatly detailed and, and uh, textured. And I just, whenever I find one, collect them. You know, they kind of come with a neat little story. They actually have uh, like potion effects. You find them in your potions. Um, and you can actually use them for some effect, but I just I just collect them in a in a barrel or a a, a chest in my breeze home. <laughs> Underneath that dot cross here, pretty self-explanatory. No radio blur, so when you have a kill cam shot, it's not blurry, and uh, it's kind of neat. TLS LOD blur. This is this is actually a ring. This is actually a ring that you can activate to blur your entire LOD level of detail. I only seem to use that if I'm taking taking screenshots. Underneath that, tweaked arrows and bolts, and then faster bows. This just adds some uh, improvements to using bows and arrows. Lighter firewood and logging Skyrim. Um, I use these two mods because of Campfire and Frostfall. Uh, it allows me to carry more firewood. Um, so it's one one weight unit versus ten weight units. And logging Skyrim is fantastic. If you're using Campfire and Frostfall, you got to have logging Skyrim, in my opinion. Uh, you can go to up to a tree, and you can activate the tree to harvest a log, uh, which is really cool. Um, instead of using the the campfire, you know, collecting resources and collecting branches and 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 kindling, um, or having to find a chopping block to gather firewood, you can do it if you're in the middle of the wilderness and just uh, collect logs that way. Underneath that, a Skyrim Tale, a, another Lord of the Rings ring quest. Again, I haven't even tried that one yet. Someday in my life I will. Underneath that, the mod Silence. Just all that does is take away the, the main theme song at the, at the start of the game during the, the main menu. Alright, underneath that, here we get into weather and lighting mods. These are when I put weather and lighting mods towards the bottom of my load order. And as you can see here, I have Mythical Ages Weather Overhaul as my recommendation in this September 2018 load order. Mythical Ages is a very small file size, um, but it adds a really beautiful look to the game. Um, when this mod came out, I did a video on it, and... Uh, I obviously I praise this mod very highly. Um, at another point in time, I did a series of three videos that showcased Mythical Ages, Rustic Weathers, and Vivid Weathers. And uh, I said that if I wasn't using Vivid Weathers, then this would be the weather mod that I would use. And uh, that probably is definitely now the case. I kind of went from Vivid Weathers to using Divine Atmospheres a lot to trying Obsidian Weathers after the update uh, came out to then trying this one again. And if I were to kind of categorize this on or compare this, let's say we have on the left side Divine Atmospheres as a weather lighting mod and on the right side obsidian weathers and seasons mythical ages would fall right in the middle 
based on the look. So Divine Atmospheres is meant to be a more uh, uh, a fantasy to give your look to to give your game a more fantasy look. You know, very saturated with colors, uh, beautiful, um, just a beautiful look in a more saturated kind of way. Obsidian is definitely more natural looking. Uh, Mythical Ages has enough saturation to um, uh, make it a little bit more fantasy-like, but not too much. Still a little bit more towards that obsidian side with the way the clouds look, the way the lighting looks. Um, it's still natural looking in, in, in most cases. Uh, there's, that, there's that haze effect that I never really liked, but I think it does kind of help with some of the, the level of detail and help with more of the natural look to the world. So, yeah, uh, Mythical Ages is my recommendation for, you know, really just an amazing weather and lighting mod. Um, a nice touch of fantasy, a nice balance of realism, um, a lot of a lot of beauty to different moments throughout the day. However, you'll see that underneath that I have True Storms and a Mythical Ages True Storms patch. So I don't just use Mythical Ages or really any weather mod without True Storms. So here I have True Storms underneath Mythical Ages and then one of the patches. Now there's two patches that are available uh, for Mythical Ages. And uh, the one that I'm using here incorporates more of the True Storms aesthetic with uh, Mythical Ages, um, uh, with the Mythical Ages feel. So um, the way it's described is that uh, uh, this patch here that I have in this load order um, brings out the dark and ominous look of True Storms. The other patch incorporates more of the Mythical Ages weathers and and a uh, 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 tone uh, colors to the game, a little bit less ominous. I guess is really the best way it's described in the in the mod description. So, whatever you might choose is all up to you. Um, both both patches incorporate the True Storms textures and sounds, and that to me is the most important thing with any of these patches is uh, uh, incorporating the. Um, those, those those rain textures they just true storm rain textures are 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 the best underneath that we have mythical ages darker nights so you can make your mythical ages nights you, you can make your nights darker uh, minties lightning during storms absolutely recommend that mod and then the patch mythical ages minties lightning storm um, underneath that there's a couple of clips in this video of of lightning flashes definitely check it out it's uh, it's so realistic looking and absolutely beautiful. It makes you want to just wait out the storm and watch it during during the game, which is cool. Underneath that, Obsidian Mountain Fog. This is an incredible mod. It's I I, I can't suggest this one enough. Um, if you're using Obsidian Weathers and Seasons, you don't need this. But if you're using any other weather mod, this is compatible with any other weather mod. It just it adds a a, a foggy mist look to mountains. It helps with that ugly level of detail. Uh, it's just, just absolutely fantastic and goes so well with um, uh, Mythical Ages. Towards the bottom of the load order, Realistic Waters 2. Just another fantastic, absolutely perfect mod to have in your load order. Um, I have a patch to make I Need work with it so you can uh, drink water from you know rivers and streams. Underneath that, I have Rustic Weathers presets, and sometimes I dabble with with trying some of these presets with with some of my weather mods. And oftentimes, if you're looking for a little more contrast to your game, if you're not wanting to use like display enhancements, then Rustic Weathers Harsh is what I would recommend for a more natural, um, detailed look to to the game. Underneath that, Color Patches Remover. And finally, fix, restore vanilla settings. And I use, utilize that every once in a while just to, um, the way it's described, kind of reset some of the things in your game to 
to normal. There have been times where I've loaded mods, something didn't quite look right, and then I'll go to use this fix for Nor restore vanilla settings, and everything kind of goes back to everything. Thing everything kind of goes back to normal. So it's really a, a really good mod to have in your load order. Phew. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure for this load order video that I that I covered and talked to, about each mod. Uh, I typically don't always get to this much detail about each mod, but for this this video I wanted to. Um, you'll see a number of clips and screenshots in this game um, to know what this load order looks like. And uh, I hope that you, um, uh, if you know, if you have questions, feel free to to, to leave a question, a comment, uh, and if not, please subscribe. Um, I try to get a video out at least once a week, and uh, if not twice, highlighting mods that that come out and if anything comes out that i think is worthy of of uh, uh of, of a better look to your game then i i add it to my load order um right now september 2018 there isn't a heck of a lot of texture mods that are popping up or even weather and lighting things um but if they do i'll be sure to cover it and uh hope that you check back in so hope you enjoyed this load order Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.